my life is a willy wah right now. And I think in every sense of that term, things are really blowing around quite a lot. And, and this is also a week that I, I'm moving, top of a number of other things. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. The last time I spoke, I was speaking about expectations. And we used a certain time frame in my life when my son was born. And there was a lot of lessons to be learned from that. Tonight, I kind of want to do a counterbalance on that because there are lessons in life that aren't always fun or easy. And I would be willing to bet that everyone in this room has experienced things like this, or if you haven't, you will. So when I spoke last time, I talked about my son being born 30 years ago on the 30th of this month. He came into life about a week early and I wasn't really prepared, but I had a lot of expectations. Well, expectations can mess things up. We might have a talk about some of my expectations about my son being born and the way he was going to be raised and the people in his life that were going to surround him, which I had, I still do. And what happened was, he was born on the 30th of November in 85. I was 35 years old. My father was 50 when I, when I was born. So my father is getting a little bit older. And he was pretty excited about welcoming his grandson into this world. In fact, he showed up a couple of weeks later and was able to hold the baby and he looked at the baby, and I thought to myself, thank goodness my father is around. Because my father, have anybody, have you had fathers? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't mean to be funny, uh, because it's not a funny talk, but I'm just a naturally funny guy. But, so, so my father has a perspective on life that I don't have. And I said, it's going to be great for my son to have to deal with me, but then have my father's perspective. So that was my expectation. Having a child changes your life. In many ways, it was exciting, it was fun, it was good, very challenging. That was in December. The end of January, I get a phone call. My father's had a stroke. He's in the hospital. He's not expected to live. That wasn't at all what I expected. And we have to realize that this can happen in our lives. That people that we love and that we care about might, due to no fault of yours or even theirs, they might not be there. The big finish on this talk is going to be that you need to take advantage of every opportunity with your friends and family to tell them that you love them and you, can hu and you hug them because you may not get that opportunity. So I was in Northern California. I flew down to Southern California. <clears throat> I went to visit my father in the hospital. Now you don't know my father. He was a good man, but he was afraid of dying. And though he was not conscious when I visited with him, his breathing was labored. He looked scared. He looked anxious to me. We were in a pretty prestigious hospital, Cedar sinai Hospital. If any of you had any experiences in hospitals, again, it's something that I wouldn't wish on you, but we bump up against these things. And I didn't have a lot of experience in hospitals at the time. Nobody was in the room with my father. People were outside talking about my father. I went in and talked to my father. Now I had some counseling experience and I had trained with hospice a little bit and I found myself in that very weird position dealing with a patient that is anxious and having great ambivalence about what I needed to say. My father is distressed take his hand and I speak to him and I tell him it's going to be okay. 
You're going to have to let go and we'll be all right. Don't be afraid. You might know this, but I'm not feeling it. I'm not wanting him to go. I have that expectation that he'll be there for my son. We left that night. We came back the next day. My sister had come to town. The family had gathered. <clears throat> my father's breathing was better. I don't know whether he heard me or not, but I felt like there had been a response. Again, I told him that we were all together. Nobody's talking to him. I don't understand how a hospital treats people like that. But I was in there doing what I could so that he wouldn't be alone. When we left, a half hour later, we got the call that he passed. People do that. They wait for people, the family to come together, they wait for you to leave, and then they're ready to move on. There's a lesson here for all of us, and, I, and again, I challenge you to look at your lives, look at the people that you care about. Don't let an opportunity go by. And for God's sakes, if you have expectations, know that they're going to be messed up. Thank you.